the normal operating temperature for the Mercedes ML uh, series is 80 degrees centigrade. As you can see on this vehicle, it's not even close to 60. It's kind of like in between 40 and 50 centigrade. Uh, the thermostat is opening prematurely, causing the engine temperature never to get up to the complete operating temperature of 80 degrees uh, centigrade. This is also seen by a check engine light with the code P0128. So if you get a check engine light on and you test it and uh, it comes back with a P0128, that means your thermostat and your engine is not getting up to uh, normal coolant temperatures, normal operating temperatures within a specified amount of time. You can also, uh, you will also experience uh, heat or the lack of heat coming from your air conditioning in the winter time. As you can see, it's 38 degrees uh, Fahrenheit outside uh, temperature today, and uh, which is not very cold uh, according to uh, winter temperatures, but it's cold enough for you to call for heat and your heating system is operated off of the coolant temperature. If your coolant temperature is not at 80, you're gonna get warm air at best. It's never gonna be hot. So that's another uh, indicator that your thermostat is not operating as it should. It's either stuck in the open position or it's opening prematurely which would call for a new part. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at the drain screw, that red cap right there, um, on a Mercedes ML 350 2006. Now, when you're facing the vehicle from the front, it's on your right side. When you're underneath the vehicle, um, it's on the driver's side, if that, that makes sense. Uh, the most sense. So you're gonna put um when you're draining the coolant you're gonna put a drain pan under here and uh, when you open it when you open it um, the coolant will drain out of the hole so you wanna fill it you wanna capture that in a container for reuse if you're going to be reusing it. Alright, so when I'm draining my coolant, whether or not I'm going to save it or not, I'm going to use a hose so that it can drain out and I'm going to drain that into a pan and you kind of want to put that coolant into the pan without making a mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit this hose into this uh, bleed nipple right here so that um, it will drain nicely into the pan. I may have to widen the mouth of this hose to, uh, to fit. Okay, the hose has been connected to the drain hole. And I have it going into a container that I'm going to use. Now I'm going to turn. And just let that bleed. I'm going to release about two gallons worth. Remember to Make sure that uh, your coolant filler container up top is open so that it can breathe. There we go. So it's it's draining as you can t as you can see. All right. So we're going to be removing the thermostat, which is this housing right here. 
It is connected by um, 10 millimeter star uh, so uh, bolts. One here, I already have a socket on it and one underneath. And uh, we're going to be replacing it with this new uh, unit here. Note that it has a sensor connector right here that you plug in the sensor um, connection piece, which will detect when the thermostat should, uh, when the temperature reaches a certain temperature, it'll get a signal and it'll open. And um, see the little clip up top on the inside that holds the hose so to to get it to get it out you just take the uh, clips off to get the hose out anyway it has um, a couple of things that we need to take off starting with the sockets so um, I'm gonna start by after the, the coolant has been drained I am going to remove that piece. Uh, I'm going to put some sharp rags around the serpentine belt and the pulleys because you don't want any of the coolant that's in here, which most of it should be drained out, but there'll still be a little bit left. We don't want any of that going on the pulleys. All right, so I um, put some plastic around the areas that we're going to get exposed from the, you know, any uh, leakage of coolant, as well as a shop towel just to have nearby. And I'm gonna start by loosening up that uh, star wrench right there. That's, keep calling it a star wrench, but that star um, bolt. That one's loosened up. So I'll get to the other one below. I think I'm going to go ahead and remove this hose so that we can see the other bolt that we're trying to access. That's done by removing the clip. Now, once you remove it, you clip that is. The hose has been in there for a while. And it's gonna be stuck. Okay. So the clip is off and the hose came out. And as you can see, all of the coolant has been removed so we shouldn't have any worries about any coolant leaking on this side I just put that out of the way and uh, What we're seeing there is not the one that we need. But anyway, uh, see that sensor right there? That sensor needs to be unplugged and moved out of the way, that connector, so that we don't damage that connector while we're trying to take out the um, thermostat.
I need two hands to do that. All right, in order to get this um, thermostat off, I'm gonna have to remove this, uh, this pulley right here because it's blocking one of the uh, 12 point bolts. So I'm gonna remove that really quickly. Make sure you pay attention to the orientation of the belt so that when you're putting it back on you don't have any issues. Now would be a good time to also inspect the belt. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. I've gotten both of those um, star wrench um, bolts off of the thermostat. I haven't removed it yet. I'm going to go ahead and remove the um, serpentine belt because I have a feeling that once Take the uh, I'll take the, the thermostat, the old thermostat off. That coolant is going to come rushing out. I'm going to inspect this serpentine belt and uh, look for any cracks or anything like that. And you do that by bending it. And looking inside at the ribs to see if there's any um, any kind of uh, cracks, and I don't see any. So it's still good. All right, so everything's off. Serpentine belts off. Um, sensor is often moved out of the way. Um, now, this thing, this thermostat, it's going to be stuck in place. I mean, it's been there for ever since the vehicle was manufactured and uh, hot coolant runs through it. So it has a nice good tight seal on there. Um, there is a lip right here that I'm touching that if you look at the new one this lip right here I can put a screwdriver in between it and just use that as some kind of leverage to pry it off uh, the only thing I'm seeing here now is that there is this hose this electrical conduit that might be in the way of that that I'm gonna just somehow just try to avoid but um, I'm gonna start by using my hand just to try and shake it off not shake it off but pull it out Remember, this is an aluminum engine, engine block, so we want to be careful. Alright, so I've been working at this for a while now, just with my hand rocking it up and down, and it's pretty loose. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slowly... remove 
the thermostat. Just fighting with this conduit right now. Just pull the pull that out of there. And this is what the old one looks like. Alright, remember when I told you guys that um, my car was running cold, it wasn't heating up? And I thought that the thermostat might have been stuck open. Look at the new thermostat, the black seal that is inside here. Try and get the focus on that. The black seal that's inside here compared to the old unit, the black seal that's in here. Now, it's in the closed position just like that one is. But this seal, see how there's space in between there? Coolant is going to rush by when the engine is not even warmed up. And as it runs by, it's going back into the radiator. And, uh, the engine will never warm up to 80 degrees Celsius as it's supposed to. Um, it is a replaceable part because it wears out and uh, that's that's what's happened here. Now that the uh, thermostat is off, the old gasket is still on here. And uh, this has to come off and any remaining pieces of the old gasket that you see around the edges here I need to clean that off and I'll be doing that with very gently with a razor blade this is an aluminum block and as such care should be given not to create any gouges or any grooves that can cause leaks all right so now that we're all set i've cleaned the um thermostat housing i'm going to go ahead and put on the uh, gasket now when you're putting on the gasket there's some cutouts and those cutouts match the uh thermostat bezel so you want to just make sure that those line up if you take a look at the gasket, it has some little notches right there next to my finger and right here. Those actually go into the holes and it just helps you to keep it in place when you're putting the, uh, the gasket on. Okay, so now, before you put the gasket back on, actually, before you put the thermostat back on, the new one, you want to go ahead and uh, connect the sensor back onto it. Once that's in place, you should go on with a clip like you just heard. Then... Uh, The rest of it should go on as a piece of cake. Just trying to make sure that my gasket is seated right when I'm putting it in place. Just line up the thermostat when you're putting it back in the hole. That should go in with a little snug fit because it's the gasket and the seals.
Okay. Now that that's seated, we're going to connect the um, 12 point uh, star bolts and we're going to do it evenly. So we're going to tighten the top piece little and the bottom piece, top piece little, bottom piece like that. I'm starting with the uh, the bottom the bottom star um, bolt. Just tighten that just a little. So I'm just going to be tightening. this all the way down so it's snug. Then I'm going to do the same for the bottom. You want it to go on evenly to create that seal. And this isn't an aluminum block so you want to be careful not to over tighten anything. So I'm going to now do the, the bottom one. I'm not going to show you on camera, but you've seen me start with the bottom one so you know where I'm at. back up to the top go back down to the bottom come back up to the top Should have removed this air pump. It would have made the job a little easier. But doing the bottom one now. But it's not entirely necessary to to remove the air pump. Doing the bottom one again. That's good enough right there. That's don't want to over tighten it. Cause a problem with the aluminum block. Putting this uh harness. Now, the sensor connector is back on. The next thing that's left to do is to put the hose back in place. Um, and that's done by taking these clips off. Taking these clips off, so you just uh, do it like that. It comes out of the those grooves right there. There's only one way for this hose to fit. But before I put the hose back in, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm 
going to go ahead and just clean this fitting. So after the fitting has been cleaned, also notice that there's a rubber gasket here. That also needs to uh, be inspected. Now this fitting has grooves. Has grooves and it can, it can only go in one, one way. And uh, when putting it in, you're gonna have to make sure that that lines up. Then you gotta press it into place. Because that rubber, uh, that rubber um, gasket needs to also be seated inside. All right. Notice how it's now in place. There's no, uh, there's no space in between here. It's now, once that's been seated, and I took a little. Uh, flat end of my wrench and I just pressed it against here and I tapped it in place with my rubber mallet. Once that's in place you can go ahead and uh, can go ahead and reseat that wire. And if you're not sure if the wire is seated you can unseat it and reseat it. And that's how it looks when it's seated. Okay, same is true for the other side, which you may or may not be able to see from here. So that's all set. The next thing for us to do is to put back on the uh, serpentine belt and the pulley that we took off. Okay, I put the belt back into position except that I have not put back on the, uh, the pulley that we removed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back on now. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up. Wait a minute. That don't look right. Let's take it off. I think that goes the other way around. <laughs> 